Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this lesson, we will be reviewing reversing entries. Now, not all companies use reversing entries. Actually, not that many really use them. However, reversing entries make the rest of the bookkeeping process uh, pretty standard. It makes it easier. Um, uh, so our reversing entries in general, if a company does choose to use this method, they will usually do reversing entries for all accrual adjusting entries and only deferral adjusting entries where the original entry is going to debit an expense or credit a revenue account. So if I was to make a video that was just how to do a reversing entry, it would be two minutes. I would tell you whatever the adjusting entry is that you did, flip it right? Um, however, I want there to be a little bit of a deeper understanding about what reversing entries truly are and why we do them. So this video is going to be a little bit lengthier because I'm going to run through a whole scenario where we really get a good understanding about reversing entries. If you would like to follow along, please keep in mind that we have all of our blank sheets available on tlctutoringcompany.com. Um, and there's this video, there's uh, this video and this worksheet available as well as additional videos and worksheets too. So if you ever do decide that you need a little bit of extra help, please feel free to visit our website. For the purposes of this video though, I will be linking to the specific page on the website that has this Google spreadsheet available to you for download and you can make a copy and kind of follow along if you'd like. So let's dig into it. We have Jackie Company, who on February 1st issued a five-year, $100,000, 3% bond at face value. Okay. Now, this bond pays interest semi-annually on February 1st and August 1st. So six months from the date of issuance is when our first interest payment will be made. To really get a good understanding about why reversing entries are made, um, I'm going to run through this scenario twice. Once, assuming that the company does not use reversing entries, and then again, assuming that the company does use reversing entries. Okay. So this first part might feel like just a little bit of a review of interest payment entries. Bear with me. There is a point to all this. So for our first one, we are journalizing the necessary entry for the August 1st interest payment. So on August 1st, we are debiting interest expense and crediting cash. Right. Now notice we are issuing this at face value, so we don't have to worry about any discounts or premiums or amortization for those of you who have been uh, in a class that works with those. But in this case, we're just going to talk about the interest payments. So we're going to use a very simple formula PRT, which is our principal of 100,000 times our rate of 3% times our time, which in this case, six months have passed. So we want the interest for six out of 12 months in a year. So every six months, we are going to be making a $1,500 interest payment. However, Jackie Company uses a calendar year. So B is asking us to journalize the necessary entry for the end of year accrual of interest. So again, we're not making a payment on December 31st, but we are showing on our financial statements that we owe five months of interest. Now, very similar to what we did on August 1st, interest expense, but then we are not making the payment yet. We're putting it into a payable account to show that we owe this interest. Now you may have heard me a second ago say five months, so we need to record interest for all of August, September, October, November, and all of December. So that's five months of interest. Again, principal of 100,000 times a 3% rate times five out of the 12 months. Because remember this 3% is for a whole year. We only want five months out of the year. So we see that on December 31st, we owe $1,250 in interest. Now give me a moment. I want to update our uh, T-accounts down here. 
So we had a debit of 1500 to interest expense, a debit of 1250 to interest expense, and a credit of 1250 to interest payable. Okay. Uh, let's keep going now. On C here, they want us to journalize the necessary entry to close the interest expense account to income summary on the end of, at the last day of the year. So there's a few different ways to do closing entries. Again, if you need a review of closing entries, I'll link to that part on our website as well. But in this case, we're using, it looks like a four entry system, but we're going to make it much easier than that. We just want to close out interest. So I'm closing it to income summary. And the account we need to close is interest expense. And now I debited interest expense for 1500 debited it for 1250 So to close that out, I have to credit it by the sum of the two. Okay. So since I just credited interest expense for 2750 at the end of the year, I now have a zero balance in interest expense and a $1,250 balance in interest payable. Again, that will show that I owe that interest. Now, on February 1st of year two, we need to go ahead and record the second interest payment. So I know that I'm going to be crediting cash. So I'm actually going to start with that. And again, I know that it's six months. So it's going to be this 1500 just like before. 100,000 times 3% for six out of 12 months. So now I'm paying that full six months of interest. However, I can't expense the full amount. So previously we were able to expense the full 1500 because it all accrued, or I shouldn't say accrued, it all incurred that year, right? So in our case, since we can't go ahead and expense the full 1,500, we're going to take a look at, well, how much did we expense last year? And last year we expensed 1,250 of it. So I only get to expense the remaining 250. And by the way, the other way we could have done that, and I know this isn't a video about interest, I just wanna be thorough. We could have also figured out how much interest had accrued from January 1st to February 1st, so one month of interest. 250. So either way works. Now the missing amount is going to come from interest payable. There's our 1,250 that we said we owed and now we see we equal 1,500 and 1,500. So the result of all that, let's put this all into our T accounts and we do it on the opposite side here, 1,250. Let's see what the overall result is. Let's do a balance line. So at the end of all this, in two and 20x2, after February 1st interest payment, we have a $250 balance in interest expense and a zero balance in interest payable. Now I'm going to move over to part two, which is going to show you the scenario where we do use reversing entries. Now our end result is going to be the same, right? It's just a different way of getting there. So A, B, and C, the August 1st interest payment, the uh, December 31st adjustment for interest and closing the interest, that is all going to be exactly the same. That doesn't change. That is not the important part about why we are here for reversing entries. Now, let's talk about what a reversing entry actually is. What a reversing entry does is it takes the interest expense and the interest payable from before. So essentially, it's going to take our adjusting entry from our previous year. Let's go ahead and put this in red. This is the important one. And we are going to do exactly what it says. We are going to reverse it. So I'm going to debit interest payable for $12.50 and credit interest expense for $12.50. Okay. Weird, 
right? So I'm hoping that you guys are taking a look at this and saying, isn't this going to cause something strange in our interest expense account? And it is. Um, let's see what we have so far. So I'm going to copy over these first three lines, right? So here we are on our T accounts. This is where we left off at the end of year one. And now we just debited interest payable for 1,250, let me put this on the next line, 1,250, okay, and we just credited interest expense for 1,250. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, let's update the balances just so you can see. Let's get a full view. So now we have a credit balance. I hope you guys are as uncomfortable with that as I am of 1,250 and we have a zero balance in interest payable. So this is where if we were taking a look at it as of this day and we said, okay, on January 1st, we don't owe anything. That's not right. You'd be absolutely correct. The reason why we do this is for the bookkeeper who is doing the next entry on February 1st. Remember in our first scenario, we had this uh, rather complicated scenario where we had to go back and we had to find out the balance and in interest payable, take that out of the interest expense. And basically we had a little bit more of a complex entry here. If we do reversing entries, then on February 1st, when it comes time for that interest payment, all we have to do is record the interest payment like we always do. Debit interest expense for $1,500 and credit cash for $1,500. The reason why, let's go ahead and put this onto our T account. Interest expense of $1,500. Let's update this balance. Uh, now, after these two, we have a $250 balance in interest expense. And if we compare that to the other scenario, we had a $250 balance in interest expense and a zero balance in interest payable. Okay. So the main purpose of reversing entries is simply that the person who is going to be making the subsequent entry doesn't have to worry about random balances in an interest payable account. They simply have to do business as usual, interest expense and cash. And this means if we are a company who uses reversing entry, whenever we tell the bookkeeper, okay, go ahead and log that interest payment, every time the payment or the debit and the credit will be the same. Uh, so if we went to February 1st, interest expense and cash. If we went to August 1st, interest expense and cash for the whole term of the bond, right? It still has the same net effect no matter which way we do this. Okay. So I hope this was a little bit of a deeper understanding about why we do reversing entries. But moral of the story is, if you are ever asked to do a reversing entry, you are simply going to take the original adjusting entry and flip it. That's it. Okay. So I hope this was useful. Uh, we'll be coming up with a few more examples of reversing entries as we get a little deeper into this type of lesson. But um, until next time, please be sure to subscribe. And as always, happy studying. Thank you so much for watching.